So several of Kyle's players said they weren't aware of the rules. So Keyshawn, do you believe Kyle didn't know the overtime rules? And if he didn't, how bad a look is this for Kyle Shanahan? Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to give him the benefit of the doubt because- You were skeptical yesterday. Yeah, yes. yeah, I was skeptical yes. yesterday, but it wasn't about Kyle not knowing, but now it's about Kyle not knowing. Mm -hmm. I was skeptical about his communication with his players that they would get every attention to detail available to them in situational football, you name it. They're supposed, they're supposed to know everything like a coach. When you're on the field, you're supposed to know everything. I'm supposed to think like you, Skip, period. Every single coach that I ever played for, I can think the next move, what they think it, because it's been buried in my head on a consistent basis. That's why people always say, well, you think just like Belichick, you think just like Parcells, you think just like Dungey, because it's been drilled in because me so do. much. <laughs> well, I, I probably do, but it's been drilled in me yeah. so much yeah. to a point where I can't forget. Now, if he did not know the overtime rules as a head coach, as the CEO of the football team, especially in the Super Bowl, I'm not saying fire him. That's a fireable offense, though. Mm. How could you not, as the head coach mm -hmm. of a Super Bowl team, not know the rules? Because Andy Reid, all his players say, hey, man, we go over this all the time. We go over this all the time. So that tells me mm -hmm. that Andy Reid is telling his players yep. constantly, this is the deal. This is the deal. Now, here's what I would say. If you listen to the clip again, yep. it sounds like he was kind of just talking and because he caught himself when he was like, well, you he know. Had a chance on fourth and one. Yeah, had yeah. a chance on fourth and one. So, okay, so I, that, I'm going to try to give him the benefit of the doubt because right. I, I, I would hope that Come on, man. I would hope that he knows the rules. Okay, so the money line before you go was, I mean, love to score a touchdown there at the end yeah. and not give Pat another chance. Yeah. Okay, right. that's the line in question. Okay. What, 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 what I would, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. One of the smartest coaches in the National Football League. I would say I've never practiced overtime rules. I, and I've also never not ha had a problem with understanding them because it's simple rules. They just changed it in 2022 after Mahomes and Josh Allen. That was a big deal. It's a storyline. Of the, <clears throat> of the summer. Competition committee went in, changed the rule, but changed it only for the playoffs. So it's only changed for the playoffs. But again, it's a simple rule. It's not a hard rule. It's not something where you're like, oh man, this is like, like it's not like a, an obscure, obscure rule like the, the free kick rule. Like if you fair catch the football, you get a free kick and you can, if it goes through the uprights, it's three points. Like, I wouldn't know that rule, and if I saw it, I'd be like, what, what just happened? But this, for the players, for the players to say, I don't know the rule, it needs to be veteran players, that's hard. That's tough for me to believe because I don't... But I don't, they said it, though, Richard. I know, I know. But I'm saying that's, that's not on the coach. Like, if I'm in football, and I'm telling you I don't know the rules to the game, and I've been in the game 10 years, 11 years, and I'm telling you, <clears throat> hey, I don't really know how that goes. That's on you. That's on a player. Because you've been in this game too dang long for you to sit here and tell me, I don't know the rules to the game I'm playing that I love so much. And the first time I learned about it, they literally have a rules meeting beginning of every year in training camp where they explain all the rules, any new rules that have just changed, and any reminders yeah. for new rules that have been tweaked. You know, hey, we got a point of emphasis. It's going to be horse collar or it's going to be pass interference or it's going to be be holding on the offensive line. Those are going to be our points of emphasis this preseason. Hey, the playoff rule is changing for overtime. It's going to change in this way. Each team, if you score, if the first team scores seven, then the other team gets a chance to score a touchdown. Yeah. That rule is changing this year. They are clear and concise, and they explain to every single team. And throughout the year, they send reminders. And they send reminders. And so for me to hear that from veteran players is, is concerning because – like that's like that's on you, that's on you. Like and 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 people saying I like and, Kyle too, <clears throat> I like Kyle too. But 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 I'm I'm, I'm I, look if, if, if what's on Kyle is on Kyle. But I'm not going to sit here and say it. Eleven year vet not knowing the overtime rule is on Kyle Shanahan. I've never practiced an overtime rule. I know I knew the rules. 
I never, we never practiced it. We never went over the scenario. Hey, if we go into overtime, it's this. When we, when well, we went rules overtime, a lot, it, it, it was, it was based, this rule's been in place two years. Right. Our rule is simple. We get the football first, kick it, go down, we win, it's over. No, that was, no, that was it basically, wasn't. No, it wasn't. You, you kick mean? a field goal, it wasn't over any time. You kick a field goal, the other ch- team gets a chance to respond. No, you I'm, saying, to score a I'm saying when you, you, when you were day. playing. When I was playing, that wasn't yeah, the but, but they changed it. But when I was playing in overtime, you get it, you score, you go home. You score then a they touchdown. changed it. No, you kick a field goal, too. It, it, you kick a field goal, the other team gets a chance to respond. It's been that way for a very long time. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying this rule is nothing new. Now, if them kicking a field goal, that rule is the same as the old rule. They kick a field goal, the other team gets a chance to respond. If they score a touchdown, the other team doesn't. That was the yes, rule. But this is the third time the rule's been changed. No, it, no it, second time has been changed, actually. Yeah. Second time has been changed, Richard. When I first came into the league, you kick a field goal, you go home. Whoever scores, it's over. Game over. Then they changed it later on in our career to what you're saying, get an opportunity to go back and forward. Donovan McNabb, back, I don't know how long ago it was, he didn't know the overtime. I remember. Remember? Yeah. He didn't know. Yeah. Right. So yeah. my whole point about this is just because they tell you at the start of the season all the rules when they come in and sit down, that's 25 weeks ago. Them dudes them been through a lot. All I'm saying from a Kyle Shanahan standpoint is it, it would be nice to go over some things from a situational standpoint like a lot of my coaches did. Hey, if this happens, down, down, down. You catch the football, down. They're going to stop the clock. We can hurry up, field goal, boom. What's Opposed your Belichick to- story when he was the coordinator and you're, you're playing the, the pre Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah. I'm in the one-minute defense. Yeah. We probably went over. It's Man, like we the Hail going, Mary defense. We was going yeah. over plays when Coach Coughlin was at Boston College. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Seriously. He had me in there, and they numbered three formations they can run. And I'm like, Bill. They only gonna run, and he didn't care. Right. We was sitting there breaking it down. If he's two yards outside here, here's what's gonna happen. I'm like, I wanted to get an interception because of it, but it's attention to detail is all I'm saying. Right, and that's <clears throat> that's perfectly fine. I, I have more of a problem with the players saying they don't know the rules, but then people saying, well, it's like him taking the ball was a mistake. That defense had been on the field all day. They had just dealt with an 11 play drive, 11 play drive minutes ago, moments ago. I, if I'm a coach, I'm saying, hey, I got to give them some legs. I got to give them a break and let them get their legs back so they'll have the best chance to be competitive, to get a stop. And then I'm going to give my offense a chance to get back on the field, get in rhythm. Which is all great, but Kyle should have said that after the game in his explanation right. for why he did not defer. Right. Right? Okay. I don't know Kyle, but I definitely know his daddy. Mm-hmm. And his father, Mike, is involved in preparation for games, goes over a lot of tape for him, has a lot of suggestions for him. And back in his day, Mike Shanahan left no stone unturned. He was as shrewd an operator as ever came down the NFL pike. When you have two weeks to prepare for a Super Bowl, it's incomprehensible to me that Kyle Shanahan wouldn't carefully go over strategy, overtime strategy. There's nothing you can practice about. This is a coaching point. Yeah. <laughs> this is all what what are we as a staff going to do in case of X, Y, or Z mm-hmm. in overtime? Mm-hmm. And to me, to, if I can first step back from it, I got no problem with taking the football in overtime because this is just me. I don't care what the analytics say. If, if you take the football and you go right down the field and score it and, and you're up seven in overtime, I'll take that every freaking time. Right. Like, I, I don't care about, oh, well, then they know what they have to do. Yeah, yeah, you just took the ball right down their throat. They know they have to match your seven, right. and that's hard to do in overtime of a Super Bowl. So I would have liked to have seen Patrick have to match seven because he might not have been able to. Right. It's a whole different dynamic. So I'm, I'm cool with that. But Andy did not help Kyle's case after the game, Andy Reid, because he didn't mean to, but he kind of, between the lines, indicted him because he said, look, Kyle's brilliant, but our analytics told us that we defer if we win the toss in overtime. Okay, well, so he's saying, whoa, wait a second, what are Kyle's analytics telling him? Well, I assume all the NFL analytics would say, Defer, but, how because, could, but 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 Skip, how yeah. could anybody's analytics say anything because it's never happened before? <laughs> I right. don't know. So, It'd just be from overtimes during the regular season, right. whatever it 
<laughs> yeah, but those this is a Super Bowl, so I would yeah. think that the analytics would be different for the Super Bowl I don't versus know. the regular season or a regular playoff but game. I, I, I don't like analytics because it's not putting into factoring in. Patrick Mahomes is in rhythm right now. Patrick Mahomes just had a, thir what, 11-play drive mm -hmm. yeah. coming off the fourth quarter. You putting him right back on the field, hey, go drive down again. I know yeah. your offense has a rhythm. You have a cadence. You're in yeah, a, but if a you good stop him, though, yeah. and he gets three, it, you already know I got to get seven or I got to get three to right. tie it. But it, more than likely, you're not stopping him. More than likely, a quarterback in rhythm like he was, getting out of the fourth quarter, your defense is dead tired. Your D-line is dead tired. Your D-line has been hot the whole day. Is dead tired. They're exhausted. So they're not going to be putting pressure on him like they have the whole game. These yep. linebackers aren't going to be flying around like they have the whole game. So you're, you're, you're not going to have the advantage that people think. Hindsight is twenty twenty. I understand that. Yeah. But people saying, oh, well, you know, if, if they would have went down and scored and they were really close to doing it, if they don't leave Chris Jones unblocked, then they go down and score. And people are sitting there like, great decision, taking the ball. Like, win no, against no the No question odds. about it. But throughout the course of the game and throughout the course of other games, Kyle Shanahan's decision-making has always been in question. I don't care how smart he is, how the great of an in-game coach and design plays, that has always been a question mm -hmm. on his in-game decisions. Because if it was Mike McCarthy, oh, Lord. you see, all I, I said I was Mike just, McCarthy, and he, I, I, his I'd eyes almost got stuck he, in the back of his head. He would have been fired. <laughs> he, He'd be gone. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Okay. Oh, he didn't use the red flag. Or he didn't call a timeout. Yeah. He went to the locker room with timeouts. You gotta have the same. Yeah, I would for everybody. I would man. say that if, if they just got went on that first drive and got stopped at, at the fifty, punted it, he drove down the field and scored. And you're like, why don't they take the ball first? They drove down right down the but, field. But let me ask you this question: Could it be mm -hmm. that maybe some things didn't? Maybe some things that went on at the in that overtime didn't get communicated to the offensive line a certain way. Could it be that? Maybe it ain't just the, the kid, overtime the, rule. Maybe the kid, the kid who's not the starter, yeah. Spencer Buford, yeah. said on his on his social media that he just made a mistake. He should have fanned out to Chris Jones and mm -hmm. left the backer free. Okay. So it was just a brain fart on his part. Okay. That's simple. But could it be some things <laughs> along the way throughout the course of the game that maybe Kyle wasn't communicating to his team? You know, I, you you gotta. You got to look at everything. It ain't just one thing that cost them this game. A hundred percent. It ain't just that one thing in overtime. I'm just saying in overtime with the, we're, we're talking about this decision making, that was the factor that probably ended that drive and made it three instead of seven because there were two wide open guys. There was Brandon Ayuk in the back of the end zone and there was right there Juwan Jennings right to his right. Yeah, if his he, he for sure could have hit Jennings. And yeah. so, by the way, to your point, they had driven 66 <laughs> yards in 13 plays. That's a lot of plays. And they got it all the way to third and four at the nine. So you still even have a chance to make another first down. First down. And I don't know if Chris Jones lined up wider than he usually lines up. He may have because he's more DT, you know, defensive tackle. Right, but, yeah. but he lined up a little wider, and I think it threw them a loop. Like, they, they weren't the, – the, they lost assignment. They, right. Somehow, but that's why nobody the, blocked Spencer him. Buford wasn't the starter. Feliciano yeah. was the starter. He got hurt earlier in the game, so Spencer Buford had to play more plays, and he makes a mistake on the play. And, and, and it's fine. We can, we can say Kyle Shanahan made a mistake. He didn't know the overtime rules. But you take that away, it's a touchdown pass, and we're, we're going a different direction with it. Give Andy Reid credit for preparing his team. I'm, I guarantee you this. Kyle Shanahan will <laughs> go over the overtime rules now. You know what well, now? I'm just saying, Eric Ormstead and, and Kyle – Juszczyk said they didn't know. But that's, but that's more like if these are rookies, you, you're right. But these are vet players. Veteran vets. I get it, but yeah. they say they didn't know. Yeah. So that says more about them than, than, than Kyle, I'm telling you. So, Richard, as much as you love Kyle, as Keyshawn drove home the point yesterday, the fact remains he's now had three Super Bowls in which, as a coordinator and twice as a head coach, he had double-digit leads and could not hold them. For, what, for whatever reasons, maybe not all his fault, maybe a little, maybe a lot his fault. You can break it down any way you want to. Mm -hmm. But those facts remain, and now there's some hazy sort of skepticism about, wait a second, did you or didn't you know exactly why you were taking the football or not taking the football to start the overtime? And because of that, that's going to hang over his head yes. going forward. Yes, and absolutely. if they ever get back to one of these again, it will It'll be, be the think, think about it, though, and, and I, can't, I don't want to keep talking about it, but laboring the point. 
But even Chris Jones said, we've talked about this for two weeks. We've talked about overtime rules for two weeks. Right. That's what he said. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. I, I, and I'm he's a you. veteran player. I'm with you. That's all I'm saying. Which, which, which is fine. But I'm saying. I'm saying this. I'm saying this. As a veteran guy, if I'm telling you I don't know the rules and I've been in this league 11 years, 10 years, I would put that on me. But 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 if your if coach, I'm a captain but if your coach, team, if your coach came to you two weeks before the Super Bowl and continued to tell you whatever this this this, if you do this 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 this, and come back the next day this 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 this, 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 this it's in your head, drilled in your head now. But Keith, so you already know what your coach is gonna do Keith, based on when you get the football, or not get the football. Keith, if even if you don't go over it, you know situational football good enough. Hey, this is what we should do in this situation. This is what this yeah. is what I would do. I'm in this league. You're almost a coach that late in your career. In 10, 11, 12 years, you're you're pretty much you coach. Are. You're a coach on the field. So you're sitting there like, hey, this is this is man, they in the red zone. But what happens these are in the this, things that they do in these scenarios? But what happens in this situation, though, Skip and Rich, is the fact that the players are saying that they did not know makes everybody believe Kyle didn't know. Right. I'm, I'm saying where Andy Reid's players are saying, yeah. well, we knew, which then says Andy Reid knew. That's <laughs> right. That's what I, it's boiling I'm not, down to. I'm not arguing that. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm saying we this conversation would be really irrelevant with a block there. And I'm saying, like, I hear what you guys are saying. Fair point. Fair point. I'm 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 90 percent sure Kyle Shanahan knows the rules. I'm probably I'm probably 95 percent sure. He if he doesn't, then then right. I got a lot of questions about this league and about coaches. I think he is, he's I think one he, of the smartest coaches. In I think he knew. Now, if you ask me, did he tell his team? No, I, I would probably say no. I don't think he told his team. I don't okay. think he explained to them the night before or anything like that. I don't think so. Either. All right, back to your final point. The great thing about the game you guys played at the highest level, what coaches have told me for 50 years, is. Every football game, you can boil down to two or three plays. And this one, for sure, boils down to one play and one missed block in which if the backup lineman just gets in Chris Jones's way, you, you can either, you, you can almost swift on him, but if you'll just get in his way and give Brock Purdy a second and a half more, just a second and a half, uh, he's capable of finding one of those two, and we might be having a different conversation right right he's, he's literally looking at Jawan Jennings yeah. if you give him a second he, he, I don't know if he side arms arm, it yeah. whatever he does but it comes down to that play and you don't want to blame the player and say man he's a terrible player he made a mistake he'll he'll be better he'll learn from it he'll improve but too late it, I mean, <laughs> he'll regret he, him he said he made the mistake right. We could have just blamed it on Kyle. Right, right. We were blaming the right tackle. I was blaming the right tackle. Yeah, we could have blamed somebody. <clears throat> but I respect him for doing that because he he said, hey, it's not on Colton McKivitz. This is on me. I should have banned out. That takes a bigger ban. I respect him. He'll that. be cleaning out his locker. Maybe. <laughs> Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show? Make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.